so that the cells communicate with one another. And as a clinical cardiologist, I can tell you the most electrical organ is the heart, you know, followed by the brain, but all the cells are electrical. So in this slide here, when I was at recent conferences where the autistic rate in a male child now is 1 in 67 births, and it's like 101 in 110 in a, in, a, in a newborn girl. When you look at the rate of autism, in 1970, it was 1 in 10,000. Now it's the numbers I gave you. And we're in the computer age. We're in the technology age. But clearly, clearly, with tensegrity and because our bodies are electrical, that, to me, is probably the biggest cause of learning disabilities, ADD, ADHD, and autistic behavior. <laughs> Uh, Asperger's syndrome in the United States. Now, that's just a cellular phone, but a cordless phone is worse. There's no doubt about it. In my mind, and I was really touched when I saw that only a few people have cordless phones. For you, for you people who have cordless phones in your house, throw them out. Just get rid of them immediately. Just go home and put them in the trash, because that's where they belong. That's where they belong. So anyway, having an, an idea of tensegrity and knowing that there's cell-to-cell -cell communication this is so important in understanding the health and healing of the body. So these chaotic vibrations in the newborn, uh, th there's been an enormous increase in premature births. You've heard about the sterility in male and females. There was an article in the 2008 Journal of Epidemiology that looked at 13,000 children. And more than 10,000 of them had learning disabilities, behavioral problems, uh, ADD, ADHD, and the culprit was wireless technologies. So if you look at some of these wireless technologies, and uh, Ali Johansson, he says, cell phones and other wireless are a real danger. And Professor Sanford says, the largest human biological experiment ever. I can tell you as a cardiologist, I really agree with that. And uh, I, I resonate with it because I, I've seen, you know, the damage these things can do. And the problem is, and Magna said this uh, with, you know, her whole list, the problem is, is that you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't taste it. It's like having, you know, an enormous amount of radon, you know, you know, right here, so close to your body. So it's a silent killer, and it undermines our body, and, and we need to be aware. Now, these microwave radiation cell phone towers, um, probably, I mean, I've heard from Clint Ober, my co-author on earthing, uh, he believes that in the next 10 years, there'll be a cell phone tower every two blocks in the United States and Canada. So uh, if that ever happens, uh, our human race is going to be in, in real trouble. Uh, even Einstein said it a few decades ago. I mean, he said, if the honeybee leaves the world, the planet, you know, so will civilization. And he knew that the honeybee was very sensitive to frequencies because they rely on navigation systems. And what's happening with the honeybees right now is that they're being decimated across Europe and uh, South America and the United States because with all the cell phone towers, they can't find their hives, they can't find their homes, and they die. And so there will be a, a big problem with cross-pollination. And uh, who's ever running, whatever the government is running, the United States government, I don't know what, who that government is, but somebody's got to take responsibility for uh, the future of mankind. But getting back to the present day, these biological effects uh, are really persuasive. I mean, if you look at 1800 megahertz, the frequency of a typical cell phone, and if you look at the rat model, uh, basically in the rat model, um, there is DNA damage uh, in the neurons, and it's mainly in the mitochondria. And the problem with a lot of illnesses, and I've seen chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia syndromes, and unexplained illnesses in people, is that when people are exposed to um, uh, the wireless technology and they get sick, and we call it autonomic dystonia. In other words, they have autonomic nervous system dysfunction uh, because their the sympathetic and their parasympathetic nervous systems go out of whack, and what happens is uh, they have an excessive what we call sympathetic drive, so you get headache, lightheadedness, dizziness, tingling, heart palpitations, pressure in the chest, etc. When you go to a doctor's office and he gets lab tests, I can tell you there's really no lab tests that really look at this. C-reactive protein is not elevated. Sed rates aren't elevated. Markers of inflammation aren't elevated. Uh, one of the markers that I found that is elevated is an 8-hydroxyguanine, which is a marker of DNA damage. It's nonspecific, 
but it's a stealth marker. So if you or one of your loved ones keeps going to doctor's offices and you don't know you're electrosensitive, there are really no good biological markers that the conventional doctor knows to test you. And he's going to look at you and say, it's all in your head. And he's going to send you out or put you on uh, Prozac or Valium or some other drug, and uh, you're going to have dissatisfaction. And you're going to go from doctor to doctor to doctor because a conventionally trained doctor doesn't know how to deal with the wireless. First of all, he or she isn't even uh, up to speed on it because there's no drug salesman detailing them in the office about, hey, you've got to look at wireless as a factor. By the way, in these rats, if they pre-treated pre these rats with melatonin, they got a lot better. And, re and remember, the greatest, um, well, I should say this, the biggest prescription in the United States right now is Ambien. There's 130 million people in the United States that can't sleep. And insomnia is one of the greatest problems because if you live near a cell phone tower or if you have cordless phones in your bedroom or if you're on a cell phone, your melatonin in your brain is going to go down. So insomnia is going to be a big problem. Whether you're waking up in the middle of the night or you can't get back to sleep or whatever it is, uh, this is the biggest cause of insomnia in, in actually uh, in probably North America and the world. Now, one of the other things that the wireless does is it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Uh, you've had previous talks on this, and what happens is, particularly in the young person, is that, and this is my, you know, hypothesis why we have so much autism, is if a young child is exposed to the wireless, the wireless opens up the blood-brain barrier, and if that young child got, let's say, uh, a measles shot, or hopefully there wasn't thimerosal in it, uh, or got a, uh, a trivalent shot uh, with live measles, for example, and the blood-brain barrier is opened, or if they had you know, food dyes as a young child, or, you know, high fructose corn syrup, you know, I mean, anything, or exposed to cigarette smoke, the blood-brain barrier gets opened up, and uh, these young children are just sitting ducks for uh, vulnerability in the brain.